on behalf of the congregation and as well as the pastors i welcome you all to this morning service as we have come into the presence of the lord may the lord continue to bless us with his holy blessings in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost amen god you are my god i search for you i thirst for you like someone in a dry empty land where there is no water i have seen you in the temple and i have seen your strength and glory because your love is better than life i will praise you i will praise you as long as i live i will lift up my hands in prayer to your name i will be content as if i had eaten the best foods my lips will sing and my mouth will praise you grace is heavenly father we praise you and worship you lord for this sunday morning as we have come into thy holy presence though we are now joined together worshiping you through this online service oh lord we seek your grace upon each and every one of us may the blessing of god come upon us lord and we'll see the glorious face of god the wonder working hand will touch each and every one of us this morning as we are going to worship you through praise and worship joining with the team and also lord as we are going to listen and meditate thy word you be with us and bless us master may this service be a blessing and magnifying your name glory to your name alone in jesus name we pray amen shall we all sing together praise him praise him through this singing may we bring glory to the name of the triune god pastors we greet and welcome each and every one of you for this online 
service and let us ask our Lord to help us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Though we are worshipping from different places again, let us be united in one spirit to lift the name of our Lord through our praises and through every aspect of this worship service. Let me read the names of those who are celebrating their birthday and the wedding anniversary during this week. Birthday, 10th, Mrs. Abhinaya Allen Moses, Mrs. Esther Sundar, Mrs. Janet E. Benjamin, Mrs. Jyotsana Niranjan, and Mr. Raymond Charles. On 11th, Mr. C. Joseph and Ms. Varsha Salomi Devakumar. On 12th, Mr. David J. Prakash John, Mr. Jeffrey Franklin Samuel. On 13th, Mr. John Edward Sitter. 14th, Mrs. Vatsala Thomas. 15th, Mr. Jonathan Isaac and Mrs. Sylvia Lamek. Wedding anniversary, 9th, Mr. and Mrs. Theophilus Benjamin. 13th, Mr. and Mrs. Mirgumula Sudhir. So, let's take a few moments during this week to call these children of God, to wish them and also to pray along with them. Let's look to the Lord in our prayers. Allowing gracious Heavenly Father, what a great joy for us to know that these, your children, are completing another year in their personal life, in their married life. Father God, as you are guiding them into another new year, Father, we pray along with them. You know what their prayers, their desires, their wants. Father God, you are reminding them because they fear you, they will never lack anything. And Lord God, all these years, you have been the Jehovah Jireh. You have been the God of providence, God of protection. And you have preserved these individuals and these married couples for thy own glory. And Father God, you have led them by holding on to the right hand in, uh, in all the places, O oh Father. And that is why, with thy breath in their nostrils, they can say, by God's grace and his mercy, we are completing another year and entering into another new year. For the God, during this new year, you know what the needs of these, your children. For the God, if they have any prayers on behalf of their family, members, friends and relatives, you enable them to see how you are answering to their prayers, O oh Father. Likewise, O oh Lord God, let these married couples continue to be as a great witness unto you. Father God, let their marriage continue to inspire many other couples around them, O oh Father. And Lord God, help them, help them to keep saying that, yes, the Lord has brought us together as one flesh in order to have a generation for himself and also to keep glorifying his holy name. So, Father God, as you are the author and the finisher of each and every one's life, we pray, O oh Lord God, you continue to take care of all these, your children. And as a church, we bless them for many more wonderful, blessed, marvelous years in the life of Father. We ask you this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, we have our youth fellowship to lead us into a time of singing praises to our Lord. So let's join with them and sing joyfully for God's glory. Good morning and good evening, church. Uh, even as third wave is hitting and we are forced to stay at our houses and worship, let us not be disheartened by this. Let us still take every opportunity to praise God from wherever we are by singing our first song, Come, Now is the Time to Worship.
tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. skill to understand what God has built, what God has planned. I only know at His right hand stands one who is my Savior. I take Him at His word in Can't 
in all the songs that we've been singing and everything that we hear at church, we know that God is the ruler of all things and that he's our savior. But what is expected of us is oftentimes very difficult to do and that is surrendering to God. Not just when we come to church, not just on Sundays, but every day of our lives, every moment that we breathe, we speak, our thoughts that we think, we're supposed to surrender it all to God. So as we sing this next song, let's just surrender our hearts and ask God to take over us and lead us in everything that we do. beautiful day that you've given us, O oh Lord Jesus. Thank you for blessing this Sunday, O oh Lord Jesus. Lord Master, wherever we are, Lord Jesus, I pray that your presence is with us, O oh Lord Master, and I pray that you be with us throughout the service and bless this day, O oh Lord Master. In Jesus' most precious name, I pray. Amen. Now this is the time for us to look unto God in prayer, especially as the Word of God calls us to pray for the various needs of people around us and also especially for the kings and those who are in powerful position, we need to pray for them. So therefore, we do not know how to pray and let us seek the presence of God, especially the anointing of the Spirit to lead us in time of prayer. Let's look unto the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, once again we come to your throne of grace this morning. 
we thank you lord for the second sunday of this month in this new year oh lord though we are now going through once again a time of lockdown and uncertainties and the fear of the spread of this virus but lord we know that you are in control of everything you are such a wonderful god in whom we put our trust again this morning because you are our omnipotent god and you have created everything for the purpose therefore master with that purpose be fulfilled through each and every one of us not only this morning in the days to come oh lord you are our savior and redeemer you are our rock of salvation we rejoice in you master for all that you have done during the christmas and new year seasons and also enabled us to worship you receive thy word or thy promises and help us lord that we will walk by thy word and be anointed by the spirit in every situation we go around in everything we face oh lord help us to realize and remember the word of god is working in us this morning lord we want to thank you for our world leaders and especially we hear that how this disease is increasing in many parts of the world and the world leaders are once again not able to understand how to bring down and all the health workers around the world are trying the level best to educate people to bring awareness among the people and though lord we have found out some vaccination but yet we have seen that how this disease overpowering everything therefore master we pray unto you cry unto you lord have mercy upon thy creations thy people whom thy have created and whom you have made them to be spread over the nations and therefore lord you are the one who created all the languages and kingdoms for thy name sake therefore master you said that go and fill the earth and as we have grown we have also seen that how the sin has grown in the world and also brought great destruction therefore master through your son jesus christ you brought you brought great relief to all of us not only to the sin of the world but also lord to all our diseases therefore master we pray that may this disease also once again be eradicated from the face of the earth so that people once again rejoice in you and the kingdom of god would expand from place to place and also lord we will take the gospel to the uttermost part of the earth we thank you and pray lord for our whole, whole nation and also president and vice president and all the minister especially the prime minister and all others who serve at the center and also we pray for the state governments you bless our chief minister and also all other ministers oh lord this morning we also pray for our matri church in india for our bishop especially we pray for our bishop dr e d s ratnam and his wife mrs evangeline yes ratnam you continue to bless them we also thank you and praise you lord for the 42nd year of mci and more than 175 years of presence in matri the matri church in india in india as well as in the neighboring countries continue to bless our denomination especially lord we pray for the christians who worship you through the matri church may continue to grow spiritually and also involved in evangelism and missions and they will exhibit the holy life which is acceptable to you lord we also pray for our general conference members especially the leaders the bishops and continue to bless them lord we also pray for all the regional conference to be held soon and also we would go forward towards the general conference we also must pray for our chennai regional conference and all the 
churches in Andaman Islands, Pondicherry and Tamil Nadu continue to bless all the pastors, district super and deaconess heads of the institutions and also the evangelists. You bless each and every one of them, Lord. We also thank you for our own Ananagar Mathri Church and the congregation. And especially we pray for all those who are involved in various works. You bless each and every one of them. Thank you, Lord, for placing your children at various levels and capacities in their own field, utilizing their talents and also skills for the glory of the Lord. You continue to bless them, Lord. We also thank you for all those who have contributed towards the development of this church and also supporting the mission work of our church. You, oh, oh Lord, we pray that may thy grace be upon them and bless them, Lord. Bless the offerings, tithe and also special offerings and also vows you accept everything for the glory of the Lord. Master, we also pray for our own church organization. You bless each and every one of them, the executives and also the leaders. We pray for the entire congregation. Especially, Lord, we remember and pray for all those who are not keeping well for a long time. And we especially pray for Reverend Paul Singh, who is not keeping well. And also, Lord, as he takes the treatment, O oh Lord, we pray that as he takes the medicine, may his body continue to improve, health will improve, and he will continue to glorify thy name, bless his ministry, Master. We also pray for his wife and children. You bless each and every one of them. We remember and pray for Mr. Vincent Henry, Mrs. Shaila Endran, Mrs. Margaret Anbu, Mr. Eliagu Benjamin, Mrs. Jabatai Chalaya. You touch each and every one of these dear children of God and we and bless them, Master. We also, Lord, pray for the outreach pastors and that congregation and you bless those congregations where they worship in great need. Father, we pray for the children who are going to the school and also those who are not able to go to school and we pray for the children who are also in college studies. You bless them, Lord. We pray for all the elders, especially those who are waiting for uh, their good job and children who are completed their studies and to be employed. Uh, we also remember and pray for our children who are not yet married and waiting for God's choice of um, their alliance. Lord, we pray that may they find right partner in this year and they may bring joy to the family members the good news that how the children are getting married and settled down in their lives we pray for such kind of parents who are praying for several months and years you hear their prayers and have mercy upon them lord we also lord pray for all our ministries you be with each and every one of our church members in the days to come we all would work together for the glory of the Lord and help us, Lord, that we will take the word of God into action and we'll also spread the love of God to people around us. Master, once again, we bring all our prayers and petitions to you alone, uh, to the throne of grace, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray while we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Bands of marriage. I announce the bands of marriage between Mr. Rogit Emanuel P., son of Mr. T. Prince Sedbin and Mrs. Esther Kripavadi member of Ananagar Matrichar and Miss Esther Nivedita, daughter of late Mr. S.G. David Raj and Mrs. Sugasini David Raj, member of Ananagar Matri Church. If there is any valid reason as to why these two persons should not be united in holy matrimony, it must be given in writing to the pastor. This is the third bands of marriage for them. Let's pray. Gracious Father, who created all of us for a purpose, especially you have created us so that we would bring the love of God into this world and build a beautiful Christian home. As Mr. Rogit Emanuel and Ms. Esther Nivedita consented to build a house, Lord, we pray that you be with them and bless them. And thank you for the parents and relatives who also given their consent. 
continue to bless them as they are going to get married. We pray, Lord, specially, the day of marriage be blessed from heavenly places. The holy angels will come down and the train God would pour out his blessing upon them and they would continue to see the grace of God. Therefore, Master, I pray for them, meet all their needs, give them travel mercy and grant all that wishes they have in their heart and fulfill all the desires in the days to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord is good and His love endures forever. We praise God for this facility God has added into our lives to worship Him through online and also be united with one another while we listen to God's word and also participate in praise and worship. Few announcements. The Sunday worship services from next week onwards will have through Zoom services and uh, you can also have it as an online services in later time, you can view it. And uh, an hour of prayer um, will be conducted um, every second Saturday and fourth Saturday if the um, lockdown continues on from next month onwards. So you all can keep in mind and the Sunday school. Uh, will be conducted through Zoom from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. And also the hour of power prayers will be conducted from Monday to Thursday, 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. The Wesley cell groups are meeting uh, from this Monday onwards, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, uh, through Zoom at 7 p.m. And I request all of you to participate. And uh, God willing, we are going to study from the epistle to Romans. And I hope you would be blessed by going through Romans. The Bible study is also conducted on every Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, through Zoom. I request all of you to participate and blessed. The confirmation classes will begin from 16th Jan 2022 through Zoom uh, from 4 to 5.30 p.m. So I request uh, the parents to encourage the children who are not yet uh, confirmed uh, help them to be confirmed so that uh, they, they need to attend the classes uh, so that they can be confirmed without any problem when we go for that service. Therefore, I request the parents to kindly uh, enroll the, uh, your children's name with the office or give the names to the pastors. The scripture lesson for today's meditation is taken from Galatians chapter 6 verses 9 and 10. Mrs. Evelyn Amresh will read for all of us. Today's Bible reading is taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Here ends the Bible reading. Praise be to God. Dear friends, from the scripture lesson which was read to us by Mrs. Evelyn Amresh, we see in verse 10, Apostle Paul saying, Let us do good to all people. And he also says, We should not become weary. We should not give up in doing good to others. And in order to understand more and more about what Paul, he has said in these verses, we should run through the Gospels to know how well our Lord Jesus Christ, he served others. And that is why he has come up with this beautiful commandment in John chapter 13, verse 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. So it is the law of love in Christ. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of love. For God is love. If we are walking in the Spirit, we will not use our liberty in Christ for selfish purposes. We will allow the Spirit to work through us to help others. Others is the great gospel word. So, we could see how Jesus lived for others. He has taught how one should be a servant leader. Though 
one is appointed as a leader but he or she should not forget that he is appointed as a leader to serve and that is why we could see how our lord served others being free from the law does not mean we are independent of one another for we are members of the same family and we minister to one another for we are members of the same uh, family and we minister to each other such a life involves sacrificial service in order to do good without getting weary we have to face certain losses in our life in other words sacrifice without sacrifice we cannot try to be good yes we can say dear brother sister i am praying for you but the lord reminds us that it should be in action is yes, the lord he put into action on the cross of calvary in order to save you and me and that is why we are reminded this morning of fresh how we have to be good to others and we should not become weary in doing good to others i will be taking you into the previous verses because we could see verses from 1 to 10 paul talks about four uh four category of people to whom we should be doing good in verse 1 he says toward the christian who has sinned toward this christian who has sinned brothers if someone is caught in a sin you who are spiritual should restore him gently restore him gently paul deals with a hypothetical case of a christian who is caught in a sin or caught by a sin the thought is that of someone running from sin but sin being faster overtakes and catches him or her the legalists condemned those who were caught in sin so we know from the gospels how these pharisees and the teachers of the law were thinking of themselves that they are very righteous and they were always condemning the people who were into the sinfulness in john chapter 8 verse 3 3 uh, to 5 we see the teachers of the law and the pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery they made her stand before the group and said to jesus teacher this woman was caught in the act of adultery in the law moses commanded us to stone such women judgmental whereas paul says christian should restore the one who is caught in sin so the task of restoration is not to be undertaken by new believers in the faith but by those who are in spiritual life because paul he goes on to say but watch yourself or you also may be tempted watch yourself or you also may be tempted so first of all he says how we should be restoring we should be restoring the people those who are in sinfulness gently not by condemning them not by being judgmental gently and then paul goes on to say the spiritual should be involving in such act not the young believers the new believers who are still growing in the word of god the new believers who are growing in the word of god if they involve in restoration of the sinners who are in sinfulness probably they may fall into sin so paul says gently and then those who are spiritual should be involving in this restoration work and secondly paul goes on to say towards a christian who is burdened verses from 2 to 5 carry each other's burdens and in this way 
you will fulfill the law of Christ. What is that law? The law of Christ is love. So carry each other's burdens. A serving Christian lends a helping hand with heavy loads. Though the principle would apply to all burdens, the context has special reference to the heavy and oppressive weight of temptation and spiritual warfare. Spiritual failure. While the spiritual do the work of restoring, all believers are to become involved by prayer and encouragement. Paul wrote this to fulfill the law of Christ, that is the principle of love. Something must be laid aside if a believer is to be a burden bearer. And that is conceit. In other words, arrogance. So Paul says, if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. And then he goes on to say, each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to somebody else. For each one should carry his own load. What Paul says here, before I could carry each other's burden, I should know who I am. I should know where do I stand, what is my spiritual standards. And I cannot think of myself, I am something great. If I am thinking of myself that, oh, I am in this level, when it comes to spirituality, there enters conceit arrogance and then we will fail in carrying each other's burden so the christian does in fact test himself by carrying his own load and this does not contradict verse 2 because the reverence the reference there is to heavy crushing loads more than a man could carry without help so in this verse a different greek word is used to designate the pack usually carried by a marching soldier. It is a burden Jesus assigns to his followers. We see that in Matthew chapter 11 verse 30. There are certain Christian responsibilities or burdens each believer must bear which cannot be shared with others. Jesus assured his disciples that such burdens were light. Dear friends, we have to restore people whom we think that they are in sinfulness. We cannot be complacent like the Pharisees or the teachers of the law. And secondly, Paul says we should carry each other's burden. And thirdly, Paul talks about how a believer, how a Christian should be very much concerned about the teachers of the word toward the teachers of the word in verses 6 to 9 I'll read to you verse 6 anyone who receives instruction in the word must share all good things with this instructor to put it very simple in the church whoever take time to prepare the word of God and share they should be taken care. One responsibility of each believer is to shoulder the financial support of the servants of God in the church. The Judaizers influenced some of the believers to slack off in their support of the teachers, a special group who were giving their full time to this ministry and who were reimbursed for their labors. If you read 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 to 14, there Paul comes up with a beautiful explanation how the servants of God should be taken care. So th this concept of voluntary giving to provide for the Lord's servants was revolutionary since Jews were taxed for the support of their priests and Gentiles paid fees, made vows to sustain the religions. The admonition is clear that as a teacher shares the good things of the word of God 
a believer is to reciprocate by sharing all good things with his instructor. The teacher of the word shares spiritual treasures and those who are taught ought to share material treasures. Paul repeatedly taught that the spiritual leader in the church was to be supported by the gifts of the people. Jesus said in Luke chapter 10 verse 7, the laborer is worthy of his hire. And Paul echoes the statement in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 11 to 14. If we sowed spiritual things in you, is it too much if we should reap material things from you? If others share the right over you, do we not more? Nevertheless, we did not use this right, but we endure all things that we may cause no hindrance to the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who perform sacred services eat the food of the temple and those who attend regularly to the altar have their share with the altar? So also the Lord directed those who proclaim the gospel to get their living from the gospel. How clear it is how the servants of God should be taken care of. The gospel should take care of the gospel uh, teachers. You may have come across in some of the churches some people, not everybody, they will not like to really take care of the pastors, missionaries and they also have this kind of thinking. The servants of God should be always seen in suffering. They are called to suffer and we have to pay them only this much. And in some of the churches, you can even see if they don't like the servants of God, they will also see how they are not giving their monthly support. And we see how many pastors, many servants of God having different stories to say about their, uh, some of the people in their congregation that they simply don't like the servants of God. They like to see the servants of God with little or in suffering. But whereas the word of God says how the spiritual instructor should be taken care by the one who is taught. It is biblical. So Christians may become discouraged with spiritual sowing because the harvest is often long in coming. Uh, Paul says in verse 9, Let us not become weary in doing good, for, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. So Paul also encourages the believers how they should be patient and in God's time, in due time, they will see the harvest and they should never become weary. So in the face of this reality, the apostle chart the Galatians not to become weary or give up because the harvest is sure. The reaping will come at God's proper time, which may be only in part in this life and in full in the life to come at the judgment seat of Christ. So dear friends, Paul he has encouraged the church how the servants of God should be taken care. And then we see in verse 10, Paul saying, toward all men, we have to be good. Not only to the believers, but here he says in verse 10, the priority is for the believers, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. But before that he says, let us do good to all people. The best illustration we have in the scripture is Jesus feeding 5,000. 
So in that 5,000 it is said, it is not only the saved, but also the unsaved participated in that meal. They were witnessing that great miracle. So we as Christians, we are reminded, we are encouraged how we have to look around and take care of all those whoever is in need of our resources. It is not only Christians. So that is why we could see in our nation, in our nation, how the Christian NGOs and the churches, mission organizations, they go among the people to share the resources when it comes to education, when it comes to health, when it comes to job or anything to do with physical aspect. The church goes to help people of all the faith and how much it is biblical. So you and I, in our society, in our neighborhood, when the Lord leads us to people of even other faith, we should be prepared to go and do good to them, whatever their need may be. But having said this, Paul says, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. In a family, husband and wife, two or three children, first, the husband or the wife will look for their own family, whether the food is available and uh, space is there for everybody and uh, whether everybody is taken care. And then we'll look outside and how we can help the neighbors. So that is what Paul, he tells here, how we should be, first of all, taking care of our believers. And here the context is, because in the church, there were many people who were suffering for the sake of the gospel. As they were going through persecutions, they were made to become more and more and more poor. Their houses were uh, swindled, their properties were destroyed, and uh, even the believers were going through job loss and many sufferings they were going uh, through. And that made Paul to say, first of all, take care of the believers in the church and also do good to others. So we are to do good unto all men. This is how we let our light shine and glorify our Father in heaven. Matthew 5.16 It is not only by words that we witness to the laws, but also by our works. In fact, our works pave the way for our verbal witness. They win us the right to be heard. It is not a question of asking, does this person deserve my good works? Did we deserve what God did for us in Christ? Nor should we be like the defensive lawyer who tried to argue. We see that in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. We know about the story of the Good Samaritan, the parable. So there, the lawyer is asking Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus made it very clear that the question is not, who is my neighbor, but to whom can I be a neighbor? Is it not beautiful? To whom can I be a neighbor? As we do good unto all men, we must continue to look into our own household. I just wanted to say this, one family whom I came across, the head of the family, the husband, was very much zealous in serving the Lord. So right after he comes back from the office, he will take some Christian literature and immediately he leaves for personal evangelism. And then from the salary, he will set apart a very big portion to be used 
for the people outside and at one point of time the children they started thinking a father is not providing first of all towards our own needs and the children started thinking we are not given proper education proper good diet and they also started saying to their mother we don't have proper dress to wear so at one point of time the children were even asking the lord whether a father is right in his approach in serving you so it is very dangerous one should be taking care of his household before he takes his resources outside so we must remember however that we share with other christians so that all of us might be able to share with a needy world the christian in the household of faith is a receiver that he might become a transmitter as we abound in love for one another we overflow in love for all men in first thessalonian chapter 3 verse 12 apostle paul says may the lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else may the lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else so dear friends as apostle paul has said let us make use of every other opportunity to be good to others but at the same time taking care of our own household if we fail in that again we are accountable to god we are accountable to god so the lord has reminded us from this chapter from these 10 verses how we should be uh having a heart towards those who are in sinfulness so toward the christian who has sinned in verse 1 toward the christian who is burdened verses 2 to 5 toward the teachers of the word verses from 6 to 9 and then toward all men verse 10 so as we continue to ponder upon the word which has come to us the lord will enable us to be good all throughout this year wherever he takes us and to whoever we encounter with the lord will give us the strength the lord will give us the wisdom and all the resources whatever we need it the lord will bless us with and we will be good in order to see that even through our life even through our life is kingdom getting extended so the lord has counted on each and every one of us and as he reminds us as how i served others you continue to serve others i will bless you and your household may the lord continue to speak to us in closing let us all sing this beautiful hymn rescue the perishing
Let's pray. O most loving, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to us through the words of Apostle Paul and Father God, how we have to be considerate towards the people who are found in sin. And you have saved us. You have given us the spiritual maturity to restore those who are caught in sin. And you are reminding us, O oh Lord, gently we have to restore people, those who are dying in sin. And Lord God, we are strengthened enough to carry others' burden. So, Father God, we cannot be complacent as how you have carried the burdens of this entire world. Father God, you are counting on each and every one of us to carry the burdens of each other. And Lord God, this morning, you are reminding us how we should take care of the servants of God who teaches your word for the God is as they involve in the ministry of the church in the gospel work as your word says the church has to take care of the ministers of the word and Lord God what a great joy as we are reminded that we should be doing good to others and at the same time we have to take care of the take care of our own household for the God. When we do this, is yes, Satan will bring in discouragements. But Lord God, we should not become weary and we should wait for the harvest in due time. So for the God, all those who have taken efforts to be good to others in your name have never lost their life. They have never become, O oh Father God, useless or we have never seen such children of thine saying that I have become poor. So Father God, continue to speak to us from thy word which has come to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God the Father and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you all now and forevermore. Amen.